one actually. Then another issue is that there exists often an exhortational language style. This has to do with the Confucianal, Confucian legacy of China, of course. And another issue is the lack of legal definitions. A consequence is also a legal uncertainty. And another consequence is that there exists disproportionate discretion, a messen, um, Zalian, uh, for subnational subnational officials. So they have a high amount of freedom to decide what they want to decide. And this is, uh, if it's too much, it's of course not that good. Another issue often said, often mentioned, is that there exists a high number of old laws, so they have, these laws have a planned character and not, are not so suitable for today's China, which is more market-oriented, of course, as we all know. And so Häuser talks in this respect of different legal generations. And a final issue is, yes, also this um, etatistic uh, point of view that environmental protection is an issue of the state and not so much of the market. And this is also the final point. And so we can say the legal quality is generally quite good, but there exist deficiencies. And finally, other factors are that there is hardly no green case law, Fallrecht, Panlifa, and no legal commentaries. And with respect to legal commentaries, I want to say that this is also something like a Chinese, that, uh, that it is a common tradition of Chinese studies, um, and as well as of legal studies. So we have, for instance, the Zuo Zhuang as a commentary of the Chunju. But we have also famous uh, legal commentaries like the Palant or Staudinger as a commentary on the BGB or the Mount Zurich as a commentary for the Grundgesetz. So here you see that this is a, a common tradition. So right now I have um, came to the end to the first part. <laughs> and right now I would like to tell you something about the enforcement of this law. Okay. So, first of all, let's have a look at the prevention and control regime. So, first of all, I want to talk about public participation. And this is called in Chinese, Gong Chong Zan Yu. So, here we can also find an interim uh, legal definition and the interim procedures for public participation in environmental impact assessment. And this regulation states that Participation consists of first knowledge of the issue. So we first need to know if a concrete situation is damaging the environment or not. This is called in German Umweltwissen, so environmental knowledge. So this is the basis for all further steps to create laws, for instance. A second issue is, a second point is, uh, of course, participation in the decision making process. And finally, uh, also the right to bring a lawsuit in cases of environmental rights infringement. So three um, aspects of public participation. Um, first of all, I would like to start with environmental NGOs as a mean for public participation. So NGOs, Minjian Huan Huanbao Zuzhi. First, I would like to tell you something about the law of the NGO, but. First, let's look at the Chinese terms. There exist mainly four Chinese terms which read Fei Zheng Fu Zu Zhi. So this is a literary translation. Then the second one, Fei Ji Ye Zu Zhi. This means a non-enterprise organization because an enterprise normally wants to gain profit, but an NGO don't want to get profit normally. The third term, Shi Hui Tuanti, means uh, something like societal organization and the fourth, um, popular organization, Minjian Zuzhi. <coughs> Minjian Zuzhi. And right now I would like to tell you some basics about NGO law. There exist mainly three legal forms of NGOs in China. The first are member organizations, the second endowments, and the third non-commercial enterprises. So the most important of these three forms are uh, member organizations and with respect to these organizations a condition exists that at least 50 natural persons 
aus natürliche Person Ziran Ran, or 30 juristic persons Far Ran, uh, must be members. Then these organizations must be registered at the Ministry for Civil Affairs, Minjangbu, and at a respective state organization. Though this is called professional supervisory unit, or as the general public says, mother-in-law organizations. And finally, there is a geographic constraint that means that only one organization per field of activity is allowed to work in one geographic unit. So if you, for instance, have in Haidian district of Beijing one organization that is big and that deals with water pollution issues, then, there is not a, then it's not allowed to have another organization that deals with the same aim. So you see that, in generally, <clears throat> we have very stringent legal prerequisites for NGOs in today's China, and that it's not as easy as here in Germany, for instance, to found an NGO. Then just let's have a look at the history of environmental NGOs in China. It all started in 1992 with the Rio Conference and the Parallel Environmental um, NGO Conference. At that time, only Chinese Gongo, so government organized NGOs, Zheng Fu Zhu the NGO in Chinese, um, participated at that conference, and that was as Elizabeth Economy, another um, main, main author in the field of Chinese environment, writes a source of embarrassment within the Chinese leadership. Um, because no genuine NGOs took part in this conference, and so it was not that good for the reputation of the Chinese government at that time. And then two years later, we see the foundation of the first genuine en ENGO in China, which is called Friends of Nature, Siran Zhiyou, by um, Liang Zongjie. Then, another two years later, the foundation of the next NGO, the Global Village of Beijing, Beijing Di Chuzong, by Liao Xiaoyi. And they, for instance, deal with uh, green neighborhoods, urban districts, and also consumption reduction issues. And this, uh, the founder of this uh, foundation, uh, Wang Yongchun, for instance, was elected as the hero of the environment of the Time magazine in 2009. And another fi famous um, environmental leader in today's China, Wang Zanfa, became also a hero of the environment of the Time magazine two years earlier, so in 2007. So you see they also gained some international reputation and they are yes, leading figures in the Chinese environmental scene. Uh, 2006, the foundation of the next... Um, no, the fo I just meant Liao Xiaoyi was the hero of the environment, I'm sorry. And then in 2000, uh, 1996, we see the foundation of the Green Earth Volunteers, Lu Jia Yuan Zhi Yuan Zhi by Wang Yongchun. And this organization, together with the Friends of Nature, were, for instance, the main forces during uh, or while against the building of the Nujiang River Dam. So they also act against uh, certain important projects in China. Then in 1989, we see the foundation of the Center for Legal Assistance to Pollution Victims uh, by Wang Zanfa, and I will tell you more about that later. Okay, so just a short historical overview. And so to sum up the situation of NGOs in today's China, we can say that there exist Gongos, Ingos, so international NGOs, as well as envir environmental NGOs. They are generally accepted by